Who is Dr. Peter John Parisi's? I was born in a little town called Linden, Michigan. Population at the time was around 5,000. There was one family somewhere that I heard towards the end of my teenage years that was not white. Other than that, I was 17 years and 10 months old before I saw my first non-white person. So I had lots of questions. I traveled the world to the Navy after I attended college for a while. And when I was 22, I started my first business. I traded stocks and bonds and gold and silver and did very well. Unbelievably blessed. So I decided to open up a limousine service while I was in the Navy. That wasn't really a great idea, but it taught me a lot of lessons. It taught me how your friends can steal from you. So-called friends. So that was my first experience. But I did get into jewelry, which was God's providence to lead me into a way of making a living. My father died while I was in the service and I was able to come home to visit him before he died. He died in sleep. And then my mother got ill and I was doing jewelry shows in Virginia Beach. So I decided to come home and take care of my mom. I gave away all my belongings I cannot fit in the car to my boss and her husband to donate to the missionaries who were going to Russia because Russia had just opened. And so they took what little belongings I had, which I had an antique um, mahogany sleigh bed from the 1800s. I'd already pretty much sold everything, gave everything, everything away, and I was living as humbly as possible back then, leading people to the Lord and living, living a life of a disciple and working as a laborer and then doing jewelry shows. So I came home, got my education for jewelry, became a graduate gemologist, highest degree in the trade. And my mom passed away. And then I was gonna go back to Virginia, but my family asked me to stay. So I did, they really didn't have much more to do with me. It was kind of funny, but it was all right. And then years later, my sister died Six hours later, one of my aunts died, and I had everything go wrong you could possibly have go wrong. Within a two week period, I was covered from neck to you know, wrist to ankles with thousands of blistering sores. Then doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. They hurt, they seeped, <clears throat> and just didn't know what was going on. So I was having my Job experience and my, in my uh, Paul experience all in within a two-week period. And I decided to go ahead and end my life and during one of the temptations of Satan. But then a man on Channel uh, 7, or 6, uh, Channel 7, 6 o'clock news in Detroit gave his witness. And I heard it. So I decided to go ahead and give my life over to the Lord. I'm sorry, that wasn't Detroit, that was no fault. And did so. And I prayed to the Lord after I asked forgiveness. I said, my mom said you won't hear my prayers unless I'm a sins forgiven. So now I'm going to ask you to work a miracle. I want you to take away all the sinful thoughts that I have had all my life that I've tried to conquer and haven't been able to. And I ask you to do this and change me. In Jesus' name I pray. Or by the time I wake up, in Jesus' name I pray. So... I said that prayer. Next morning I got up and I'm very habitual. I was getting ready for work. Couldn't figure out what I was forgetting. So I'm running around, running around. Three o'clock in the afternoon at work, it dawned on me. I hadn't had one single thought of sin and temptations that I had had problems with for decades. And God took it all away from me. And I rejoiced, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't think it was going to last. Well, it did. And then I started telling people once I got asked about what the change was in me and why I was so happy. And I haven't shut up since. Before my mother died, she was a Christian, a very devout Christian, big time into missions and that. She became pretty much blind, so she couldn't read anymore. So we tried to get Christian books and 
that from the Library of the Blind at the time on cassette. And we were able to get the Bible and a Christian devotional, and that was it. And that pretty much hurt her a lot because she couldn't read Christian books at all. So after she passed, I decided to go ahead and read and record Christian books. And I did so, as many as I could. When I had 499 chapters read in books, I was in my bathtub, the Lord told me, I want you to put these all up online. I said, you kidding? I read these for myself, not for anybody else, you know, except maybe possibly just for the blind, but I said, I want you to put it up online. All right, so I did. One thing led to another, 20 million, 20 million users on one site, and I did a few others, and quite a few thousand people, very short period of time. And then I decided to go on YouTube and have more freedom to put up where I want. Turned over my sermon audio to my friend Greg at Sermon Index and continued to move my stuff over to YouTube to try to penetrate the market better as far as China and the other places that are closed. My ministry has been in every country and island in the world because God's blessed it. And I've kept pretty well my face out of it because it's for God. It's my calling. It's my ministry. I've been blessed with the challenges of several cancers and a brain tumor, several heart attacks, chlorine gas accident. I had a lot of problems. Hit by a truck on my bicycle. Um, that pretty well did some damage. And then a couple months later, hit by a car. And that left me. Well, she actually left me on the side of the road. And um, the Lord blessed me and healed me. I got my master's, I went and got my bachelor's degree in business because my parents had told me I, I, I need to get my degree and I disobeyed them. So I went back, 47, and I got my bachelor's degree in business. Then I went forward with six weeks to live. That was my termination, uh, determination from the doctors about my cancer and they weren't going to treat me or anything. And uh, I decided I wanted to go to seminary and learn how to read Greek. And I was going to go to seminary even if I never got to attend one class. And die tried. Long story short, with relapses and problems continually, I made it through. I got my master's in divinity, talked into the seminary to having a doctorate program in divinity, and then I went after my doctorate and got it. Specializing in cancer care ministries to the church because they needed to be taught, be aware, and how to communicate and how to help. So from there, I continued my ministry. The Lord decided to take me into manual labor during the virus. So I work in a hardware store, a very large one, slinging appliances, designing kitchens, and working hard. And plus gardening, taking care of my family, and, and making jewelry still. So I'm following the Lord wherever he wants me to go. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I just have a full trust in God because he has taught me to pray. He's taught me to take everything to him in prayer and to trust him. Now he amply provided when he wanted me to come to the slums of Detroit to be a living witness. He amply provided by giving me a house that I had enough cash to pay for, which wasn't much of anything. He gave me a very huge house beyond my expectations, my spouse's expectations, just absolutely mind-blowing. That's who I am. I walk with God. I do what he says for me to do. I try my best. I'm not faultless. But I love Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. I love God. And I have a personal relationship with him. And I'd recommend that you do the same. There's the one great thing about being a real Christian, you're never alone. God is always there, listening to you, talking with you, taking care of you, watching out for you, and bringing you up with trials, tribulations, and blessings. So I'd recommend that you do so. But that's who Peter John Parisi's is. I'm not putting up my picture, but now you know who I am. 
from a man trying to live in a personal relationship as close as possible with God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, the sensitive side of God, and my Christian brothers and sisters here and throughout the world. God bless you. Keep walking. Don't give up.